In this video, we start discussing our second quantum mechanical model system, which is called the harmonic oscillator, which is a model for how atoms vibrate. So we have atom one here in green, atom two in purple, and those two atoms are linked by a covalent bond. There are some distance apart r, so what we want is to get a Hamiltonian operator. And to do that, we need to specify what the potential energy is as a function of position. So the natural coordinate for expressing this potential energy is r, the bond length. So we want a model for all possible bond lengths. So what is the value of the bond length? It can be anything between 0 and infinity. So we want to specify what r is everywhere between 0 and infinity. So we know that molecules obey certain behaviors at certain limits. So we know if it's very, very high energy, like if it's very hot, eventually the bonds dissociate and the molecule just returns to its atoms. So that implies that the potential energy at an infinite separation must be some finite value, which we can set equal to zero. So similarly, condensed phases, so solids and liquids, we know when you press on them, they resist compression. So it's very, very hard to get them below some kind of threshold uh, volume that they want to be at. So that implies that at short range, that their potential energy approaches infinity. So V of zero, we can say equals infinity. All right, so those are the two limits. What about everything that happens in the middle? So in gas phase, we know that the molecules have finite size and they're pretty happy to remain as molecules. So that implies somewhere along the lines, we've got a local minimum in energy. So if the bond gets too short, the atoms want to get further apart. If the bond gets too long, they want to go closer together. But there's some equilibrium distance R naught where the bond is happy and is at a minimum of energy because the forces keep pushing it back towards this stable, long existing molecule. So that implies at some point there is a local minimum, as I said. So at a local minimum, the first derivative of the potential with respect to distance is equal to zero. And the second derivative is positive, or it's greater than zero. Because the force as a function of distance is the negative first derivative of potential energy with respect to displacement. Okay, so putting all this together for a model for what this potential energy function looks like, we get this kind of idea over here for V of R. So at very short distances, it's very, very high. It's sloping down, which is a force that pushes out towards a long, longer bond length. And the molecule prefers to be at some equilibrium bond distance R naught at some finite energy, negative DE here, the DE being our dissociation energy, then it requires DE of energy to go up and dissociate the bond to where the atoms are free to go away from each other. So this is the sum total of kind of all five of those facts that we put together there. We got our dissociation energy, equilibrium bond length, and our potential energy function. Now there's different models for what this potential energy function could be, but in general it could be some complicated function and generally you have to find it between every pair of molecules that constitutes a bond, or a pair of atoms that constitutes a bond. So we can make this a lot simpler by approximating this as a quadratic polynomial, V2. That's this parabola that I've superimposed on our uh, potential energy function here. So V2 of R is minus DE plus 1 half K times R minus R naught squared where k is the value of the second derivative with respect to r of v of r evaluated at r equals r naught. It's the curvature of this parabola where the minimum point of the parabola is minus de r naught. Okay, so this is still a little bit more cumbersome than we'd like to work with. So what we can do is define another variable x, which is defined as r minus r naught. So now this makes this 1 half kx squared for this term here. And additionally, we don't care about displacements in energy up or down. So we can, instead of having the minimum be at minus dE, we want the minimum to be at zero. 
So we can add DE to our V of X, V of X being V2 of R plus DE. So we have V of X equals 1 half KX squared. So our model for our vibrating atom is going to be that the potential energy it feels is a parabola, 1 half KX squared. So it's going to prefer to sit at the minimum, which we have moved to be x equals 0, r equals r naught. And the stiffness of this parabola, how, how tight or weak that parabola is, is determined by this so-called spring constant k. So in the next video, we'll look at the classical harmonic oscillator and see what we get from a potential energy function of this type in classical mechanics, which we'll eventually compare to our quantum mechanical result.